Well, first off, let me start this video by saying that I agree with Mr. Reagan that the mother in the Huffington Post article is promoting stupidity and division, and it doesn't really help the left at all. I don't see trolling Christians as being very productive, regardless of what the intentions are. The Huffington Post is utter garbage. It's at least as bad as BuzzFeed. I'm certainly not going to say that Mr. Reagan's video is completely invalid. It's just that he's wrong about a number of things in it. Most of it has to do with how his religion kind of makes him blind. A soccer mom joins a satanic cult because Ruth Bader Ginsburg died. Yeah, I'm confused too. So the Huffington Post just printed an article by a soccer mom called Jamie Smith. At first I thought that this was a total joke, just clickbait written by some clever and kind of annoying Huffington Post editor. But this woman has a well-established blog about being a mom. This is a legit article by a legit mom who legitimately believes what she's writing. And that is rather disturbing. But it isn't entirely surprising. Leftists are now doing things that make no sense all the time. It's become so common to read about some insane thing that the left has done that reading one more insane thing that the left has done seems normal. That's not good. Well, even though I consider myself on the left, I mean more of an independent on the left, but still on the left regardless, I have to agree with Mr. Reagan that there's really nothing that would surprise me that could come out of the left or the far left. Another thing that's disconcerting about this article is what I discovered about modern Satanists after the article went viral. It's sad and disturbing. All of that in one moment. First, I have to sell you something. Now, I'm obviously not going to show his little ad, but I wanted to take this opportunity to explain that I consider myself an igtheist and pantheist. I sometimes refer to myself as an atheist, but since I do believe in an alternate version of what a god can be, I feel that's not a very accurate description of myself. When it comes to an anthropomorphic version of a god that sits there and watches and judges everything we do, and that we need to follow dogma from a religious book, then yes, I'm an atheist in that regard. But that's not the only concept of a god. I think that the universe is a giant living thing that we're merely a part of. And as a result, many patterns and miraculous things sometimes happen that we have a hard time explaining. Now, obviously, this can't apply to everything, and that it's likely that there's going to be a scientific explanation for a lot of the things that we don't understand at this time. But there are so many things that people will call a coincidence and think nothing else of it. I'm of the opinion that there's a number of patterns that happen for a reason. Am I sure of that reason? No. But I think being part of something bigger has something to do with it. And this is what a pantheist typically believes. I don't worship this version of a god because it's extremely doubtful that this version of a god is even aware of us. Just as we're not aware and conscious of all the living things that are inside of us. Like if you look at the human body under a microscope. It's a reasonable assumption to think that the organisms that are in our bodies don't worship us. Instead, they're merely a part of us. And that's how I think of the relationship between the universe and us. So, as I said, I prefer referring to myself as an igtheist and a pantheist. An igtheist is someone who feels that it's silly and kind of stupid to argue about whether a god exists if we're not even able to agree on what a god is in the first place. Neither the Bible nor the Quran have sole ownership of what a god can be, or gods can be. The popularity of a god concept doesn't really have any bearing as to whether that concept is valid. It's not a popularity contest. People's spiritual beliefs are quite varied. And to claim that one is more valid than another simply because it's practiced by more people or has been practiced for a longer period of time, it's just hogwash. 
So the annoying woman who wrote this article is obviously trying to bring some attention to genuine concerns that she has. The first of which she expresses early on. She writes, I fear that American citizens are inching closer to living in a theocracy or dictatorship and that the checks meant to prevent this from happening are close to eroding beyond repair. This is an utterly idiotic concern. What evidence is there of the US becoming a theocracy? She gives us nothing. She just says she fears it. Okay, lots of people irrationally fear lots of things. Irrational fears are not news that's fit to print in any major media outlet like the Huffington Post. If you had some kind of political event or statement by the president or something like that that indicates a shift towards a theocracy, I'd be with you. Someone being actually afraid that this country is going to become a theocracy, yeah, that is an irrational fear. But to claim that it's irrational for someone to worry that religious views are going to be put into law is not irrational. That's what right-wingers in this country, particularly Republicans, have tried doing for a long time. Now, I understand there are libertarians out there, but they're not in the majority. They don't have power. And, you know, libertarians don't believe in combining church and state. So, but Republicans often do. You want to erode that separation between church and state. And to me, it's a valid thing to be concerned about. If everybody in political office were a Catholic priest or, you know, they were secretly deferring to the Pope in their political decisions, okay, sure, then maybe you would have a point. But nothing like that is happening. That's a pretty narrow view of what you think constitutes the combination of church and state. Although you are trying to refer to what constitutes a theocracy. But still. I don't think Trump is even a practicing Christian. What are you talking about, crazy lady? She writes, Our democracy has become so fragile that the loss of one of the last guardians of common sense and decency in government less than two months before a pivotal election has put our civil and reproductive rights in danger like never before. And so I have turned to Satanism. <laughs> Naturally, sure, that's what we all do when politics aren't going our way. We all turn to Satanism. I certainly agree with you that it's absurd. Yeah, no, this makes zero sense. But what's also completely lacking in any rationality is her total overreaction over the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Our democracy has not become so fragile that the loss of Ruth Bader Ginsburg has put our civil and reproductive rights in danger like never before. It just hasn't. You're crazy. If the majority of Supreme Court justices are conservative, then yes, this is quite a possibility. Reading this felt like a lot of the doomsday predictions before Trump was elected, like, if Trump gets elected, the world's going to end. The world didn't end, but we generally became less empathetic, we became more bully-like, we became more polarized, we became more tribal. This is not a good thing. No, the world didn't end, but it did have some bad effects. She then goes on. Members of the Satanic Temple don't believe in the supernatural or superstition in the same way that some Unitarians and some Jews do not believe in God. Satanic Temple members do not worship Satan and most are atheists. They are not affiliated in any way with the Church of Satan. Instead, the Satanic Temple uses the devil as a symbol of rebellion. So basically, they're just atheist trolls. They're not really Satanists. They're pretend Satanists. Fun! Well, as I'll talk about later in this video, Satanism isn't what you're pushing it as it is. It's not the Christian viewpoint of what Satanism is. Now, there are exceptions to this, but for the most part, when people say they're a Satanist, it's not some someone killing babies and doing sacrifices and doing a bunch of evil things. That's not what it is. Again, I'll go into that a little bit more later in this video. So it appears that she's saying here that there are a bunch of atheists that just call themselves Satanists as a way of trolling Christians. Now, I looked into this and their intention apparently is to point out the hypocrisy of religious freedom in America. They want to show that the idea of religious liberty is a hypocritical value among 
Christians. They think that Christians want to indulge their own traditions while suppressing the religious traditions of others. Basically, they're pretending to be Satanists in order to make a point. And you'll see this sometimes when Satanists try to erect Satanic monuments on government property as a counterpoint to Christian monuments like the Ten Commandments. They're sometimes visible in courthouses, stuff like that. Well, let's be clear. You would have a fit if people were putting up monuments in those places that had scripture from the Quran. There are, of course, historical reasons for depicting Christian symbols in American government buildings. Some of the earliest recorded laws that we know of in the history of the world were the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments were supposed to have been written in around 1300 BC. That's far from being the beginning of the history of the world. A Satanist monument has no such historical significance. If atheists wanted to effectively challenge illustrations of the Ten Commandments, they should try to get the Code of Ernamu illustrated in public buildings. That's the oldest recorded law in the historical record that is known to modern humans. And actually, I think some legislators would welcome the inclusion. But that sort of historical reason isn't why so many people on the right want to include the Ten Commandments in so many things in this government. That has nothing to do with it. That's not their argument. More importantly, Christianity is our history. Christianity was integral to the history of America and Western civilization. The laws of our country were derived from Christian principles and out of an entirely Christian culture. And almost every important person in American history and in European history was a Christian. This is a weird thing about the way Mr. Reagan does things. He'll, he'll state something, and then a moment later he'll state something else that negates the argument he made earlier, and all of the things that he stated are still supposed to be valid. It's weird. Now, some of the founding fathers were deists, not Christians, and some of them were essentially Unitarians. I know he specified and didn't say all, but it was designated that a separation of church and state was necessary. Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peacefully to assemble, and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. There are no American principles based on Satanism. No prominent Americans were ever Satanists. The inclusion of Satanic symbols or monuments in American government institutions would be completely arbitrary. But more important than the religious monument question is the accusation of hypocrisy in the application of religious liberty in America. These troll Satanist atheists, whatever they are, they insist that religious liberty is just for Christians or something like that. That the Christian majority suppresses the religious freedom of non-Christians, but that's not true at all. Well, yes it is. You guys throw a fit, for instance, every time a Muslim gets any sort of power, or something from the Quran makes it even into media. Oh no, they're indoctrinating us. You don't care if people are being indoctrinated with Christianity, that's okay, but any other religion, you just throw a fit. A huge fit. You throw a fit over pagans. Now, I accept that there's some hesitation to accept Satanism specifically, but that's because the concept of Satan draws from the Christian tradition. And the Satan of Christianity is the embodiment of sin, the embodiment of evil, the embodiment of all human suffering. The idea of worshiping this is naturally detestable to every rational person. You mean it's detestable to every Christian who doesn't look more into what Satanism actually is? I mean, you make it sound like there are actual groups of religious people who literally worship everything awful in the world, who hold everything awful up on a pedestal, who worship pain, suffering, murder, rape, and all the things that we consider evil in this society. I mean, yeah, those people don't really exist, at least not in a religious context. I mean, I'm sure there can be some exceptions to this, but in general, they're, they're, those people just don't exist. There, there's not a religion like that. I mean, as I said before, you, you freak out over pagans. A lot of Christians will say, oh, pagans, they're really Satanists. I mean, come on. I mean, there are people who think that destruction, arson, and the murdering of people who are of the majority demographic is the answer to centuries of oppression of minorities. But it's not really a religion. 
it certainly doesn't get labeled as Satanism. I mean, there are indeed evil people out there, but that doesn't mean it's Satanism. Now, I'm not saying you think that anyone evil is, is satanic, but there are a lot of Christians out there who do. Anything bad someone does, they, they attribute to Satan. But even Satanists are free to worship the devil if they wish. There are no laws prohibiting this, but there are restrictions on religious liberty, and there always have been. Islamic terrorists aren't permitted to murder people in the name of Allah, and Satanists aren't permitted to ritualistically sacrifice virgins. The law against murder supersedes the freedom to practice your religion. This is true about every law as far as I know. You can practice your religion freely unless doing so breaks the law. Simple. And maybe you don't like the law. Like the laws against polygamy. Okay, you can petition to change that. But why attack the freedom of religion? Why attack Christianity specifically? Now these troll Satanists, they insist that they don't actually worship a being called Satan and that they're principled people with strong values. And that the term Satanist is merely used as a point to challenge Christians and troll everybody. But here is the problem with this position. They took the idea of Satan from Christianity. It's like calling yourself a Nazi and insisting that Hitler was actually pro-Jewish. It doesn't make any sense. But that's their position. Satanism isn't about Satan, and Satan isn't what people think it is, etc. Ironically, the concept of Satan in the most basic abstract sense is the antithesis of God, the antithesis of all things good. Christianity is the worship of God, the embrace of all things good. This notion that Christianity is the embrace of all things good is hogwash. Unless you're throwing out the Old Testament, there's a lot of hateful, vengeful aspects to that version of a god that's not better than an abusive husband or an abusive parent. Follow all these rules and follow all this dogma or I'm going to send you to hell to burn for all of eternity. Yeah, such a nice guy. You can't claim that's a representation of all things good. So Satanism is, by definition, the antithesis of Christianity. And Satan is supposed to be the enemy of Christians. So Satanists, by positioning themselves against Christians, calling themselves Satanists as an attempt to troll and challenge Christians, they have, ironically, made themselves into true Satanists. Because Satanism isn't illegal in America. Calling yourself a Satanist doesn't actually have any genuinely rebellious purpose. You're just being provocative. Calling oneself a Satanist is a personal choice without any significant effect on anyone else. And trying to be provocative without having any real purpose, well, it just makes you kind of a dick. I do think it's really stupid for people to knowingly promote what they call Satanism, knowing full well how it's going to be interpreted by biblical religious people. Yes, it is an attempt to troll Christians. I think it's stupid and counterproductive to troll the people that you're wanting to reach, that you're wanting to see things differently than they do. This is why I'm against Trump trolling the left and trolling the media. It just creates division. Yes, that makes Trump kind of a dick, but you're okay with that because it's coming from the right. So being a Satanist makes you an antagonist to Christians and kind of a dick. Yeah, even if you weren't intending to become pure evil by calling yourself a Satanist, it seems like that's the inevitable result. All right, let's keep reading this crazy article. So apparently there are seven tenets of Satanism. She writes, reading the seven tenets, I was struck by how closely they aligned with my unwritten code I had used to try to guide my own life for several years. I realized happily that these were my people and that I had been a Satanist for several years without even knowing it. Happily? Why would you realize that your values align with Satanists and be happy about that? It's like she wants to find a way to embrace the antithesis of all that is good in the world. Notice that Mr. Reagan here doesn't describe the seven tenets. He doesn't even try. The seven tenets are as follows. One, one should strive to act with compassion and empathy toward all creatures in accordance with reason. Two, the struggle for justice is an ongoing and necessary pursuit that should prevail over laws and institutions. Three, one's body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone. Four, the freedoms of others should be respected, including the freedom to offend. To willfully and unjustly encroach upon the freedoms of another is to forego one's own. Five, 
Beliefs should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. One should take care never to distort scientific facts to fit one's beliefs. 6. People are fallible. If one makes a mistake, one should do one's best to rectify it and resolve any harm that might have been caused. 7. Every tenet is a guiding principle designed to inspire nobility in action and thought. The spirit of compassion, wisdom, and justice should always prevail over the written or spoken word. So as you can see, he doesn't even make an attempt at understanding any of this. And this is unfortunately all too common among people who hold Bible-based religious views. Again, I mean, a lot of Christians will say, oh, a paganism is really Satanism. Granted, I do think it's really stupid for people to label themselves as Satanists, knowing well aware of how it's going to be interpreted. You know, there's a certain amount of trolling that's going on with it. Now, much of the article details her consternation over the death of Ginsburg and her fears about the conservative replacement. She's basically obsessed with maintaining the right to have an abortion, which, fair enough, this is an issue that has driven many women insane, so not hugely unexpected. You're a guy. You don't have to worry about ever experiencing a pregnancy. It's never something that you ever have to worry about. If you got raped, you wouldn't have to deal with a pregnancy afterwards, you know? Now... My view on pregnancy is kind of a mix. I've said it before, but I'll say it here again, just so anyone watching knows. Okay, I feel that people have the right to remove something growing inside their body, regardless of if it's another living human being or not. I think life starts at conception. So I do think that abortion in some ways is murder. But it's a necessary evil until we have technology that can give us alternatives, like artificial wombs. If we had artificial wombs available everywhere, and someone could just have the baby removed without killing it and put into an artificial womb, they could put it up for adoption, whatever, you know, and abortion would be something that we wouldn't need to have anymore. At that point, abortion should be illegal in most cases. I'm sure there could be some rare exceptions that could be made, for the, but for the most part, abortions should be illegal once we have artificial wombs everywhere. It's a ways off, but it is coming. We already have artificial wombs for other animals, so, you know, I think abortion is horrible. I think it's a terrible thing, but I think it's a necessary evil at this time. Um, she goes on to commend Satanists for challenging Christianity on many fronts, as I discussed earlier, trying to broaden the divide between church and state, stuff like that. And people like you want to remove the divide between church and state. You think church and state should be more close together. But here's the thing about the divide between church and state. The divide must also exist between the lack of church and state. What I mean by this is, certainly the federal government is not permitted to establish any church, and the federal government can't act in a way that is unfairly in favor of one faith or over another. However, in the same way, the federal government cannot restrict the free expression of religion, and it can't unfairly act against a particular faith in favor of secularism or atheism. These Satanists are trying to use the specter of Satanism not as a way of counterbalancing the government's respect of religion, but rather to suppress Christianity specifically. How? That doesn't even make any sense. You seem to be under the impression that you as a Christian should be able to force your views onto other people. You know, as I've said before in, in other videos, you know, if you say, well, I can't do this because of my religion, that's fine. But if you say you can't do that because of my religion, you know, it gets a big fuck you. Okay? Nobody's trying to stop you from practicing your own religion. You just don't have the right to force it on everyone else. I'm unaware of Satanists' challenge to Hindus or to Buddhists or to Muslims. They only seem to go after Christians. That's because here in the United States, Christians are the primary ones trying to cram their religion into law, trying to tell other people, well, you can't do this because of my religion. We've seen this time and time again, schools, other government authorities banning Christian expression, and they certainly don't ban any expression against Christianity. 
Look, I could understand you complaining about some of the schools that won't even let kids get together or students get together and form their own Bible study group that they could do during lunch or something like that. Okay, I understand being mad at that. But the schools don't need to be teaching Christianity or Christian values in the classroom. You don't get that right. Just as other religions don't get that right. Schools should be secular in that regard. If you want religion taught in schools, you take them to a private religious school. Now, if you're upset that schools will punish students for telling gay people, oh, well, you're going to burn in hell for eternity. Yeah, I mean, what are you expecting? You think that kind of hateful view towards other students should be allowed? Oh, oh, but it's not hateful. We're saying you're going to burn in hell for eternity out of love. What the fuck ever? So yeah, Christians are not the bad guys here. She closes the article out with the following paragraph. Everyone who cares about women having autonomy over their bodies should care about efforts to use religion to chip away at this right. We need to think outside the box to challenge what is coming and what is already here. The satanic temple is already doing that. And by becoming one of its members, I believe I have joined a community of people who will stop at nothing to safeguard my family's rights. <laughs> the Satanist to the rescue. And all of our rights when they are at their most vulnerable. And you know what? Never mind the rights of the child. We don't care about those, do we, Jamie? Now, here's the thing I find particularly bizarre about all this. Satanists are known, in popular culture anyway, for sacrificing babies. Valid or not, that's like, you know, a whole thing. It seems odd to me that a religion, real or fake, that is perceived to engage in the slaughter of babies would be so passionate about legal cases involving the slaughter of babies. I mean, doesn't this woman realize that anyone who genuinely wants to preserve the life of those unborn children will suspect that maybe these Satanists really do want to just kill babies and their whole women's rights argument is merely a disingenuous tactic? I mean, joining the Church of Satan just makes you look crazy and undermines your entire position and makes people think that you're just a crazy cultist who wants to kill babies. It's, it does not help you. I agree that it doesn't help them. And you know what? Who knows? Maybe there are really Satan-worshipping lunatics out there who really do want to sacrifice babies to Satan himself. Apparently, Sammy Davis Jr. was a Satanist. I got to meet people like Sammy Davis and that kind of shit, you know. Sammy told me he worshipped the devil. Sammy was like, you know, Satan is as powerful as God. And I was like, what the f what are you talking about? And he saw my reaction to it, then he kind of lightened up on it. So, you know, they're out there. <laughs> yes. And you know they're a rarity, yet you make this video anyway. As I said, you'll say one thing, and then a few moments later, you'll say something else that negates what you said earlier. And yet, we're supposed to, you know, consider all of the things that you're saying. If you're contradicting yourself, I mean, what is this supposed to be, man? The weird thing about Satanism, to me, is that there's no good reason for it. If you want to advocate for abortion, you can do that without being a Satanist. You want to strengthen the laws that affirm the secularization of the state, you can do that without being a Satanist. You want to engage in sexual debauchery like Sammy Davis Jr. You can do that without being a Satanist. That's true, and I'll agree with you there. Satan is the antagonist of the Bible. Depending on how literal or figuratively you interpret the Bible, Satan is either the representation of temptation and the cause of all human shortcomings or the embodiment of all that is evil. There is nothing redeeming about that. It's purely negative. It seems to me that if you've decided to be a Satanist, it's not because you have some noble cause. It's because you genuinely want to participate in the degeneration of society, or at least participate in the destruction of those elements of society that you hate, namely Christians. If our society was based on Christian supremacy, then what you say would make some sense. You know, if our society is based on Christian supremacy, then attempts to make it more secular would be seen as degeneracy. But that's not what our society is based on. Sure, there's, there's, a, there's a majority of people that are Christian, but that doesn't mean that's what our society is based on. We, we're a nation of secular laws. That's what it's supposed to be. Now, a lot of Christians got their thumb in things, uh, like during the McCarthyism era, 
where they added, in God we trust to the rest of our money, and added under God to the pledge. It wasn't originally in there. You know, the first amount of, of in God we trust was added to our currency in the late 1800s, you know, but it wasn't always there. You know, we weren't always trying to cram religion down people's throats. This is why so many Republicans just love the 1950s, except the tax codes, but they love everything else about the 1950s. Well, they love the media of the 1950s and have this romanticized vision in their head of what the 1950s meant based on, you know, movies and television programs at the time. But attempts to make us more secular is not the degeneration of society. I think it's likely that anyone who embraces Satanism just hates Christians. They're bigots. Are there anti-Christian bigots out there? Certainly. But you can't say it's unwarranted. And I think that is detestable. All right, well, that's it for me. And remember, it's not that our liberal friends are ignorant. It's just that they're Satanists. Well, you sure thought that was funny, didn't you? Oh, well. <laughs>